Because the battery itself is a 19, uh, seven, 1917. That's yeah. when you were born. Yeah, it's a 2000, a 2017. Yeah, and you know, obviously it's 2024 right now. So, you know, we're at about seven years. Woo, old style. Welcome to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. First up, Sam and Julie put the finishing touches on the Holley C6 Corvette with a rear brake upgrade. Meanwhile, Sam and Doug fine-tuned the Nissan 240Z for the great race with meticulous maintenance. But the excitement doesn't stop there. Sam adds a touch of performance to a Mustang GT with new Valtronic exhaust mufflers. And then switches gears to enhance the Chevy Hemi truck with a new steering column and gearbox. Today, Sam and Julie are putting the pedal to the metal as they complete the rear brakes on the Holley C6 Corvette. With bare errata speed rotors and factory Z06 brake calipers, they're delivering the ultimate bang for the buck performance upgrade. Join us as we witness the perfect fusion of affordability and top tier performance. All right, we're continuing on with our Holly C6 Corvette project. And what are we doing this week? We're going to finish the rear brakes with the bare big brake upgrade, just like we did the front brakes. We've got the Z06 rear calipers. This way we can go ahead and bleed the system, finish off making the rears look pretty, put on the wheels and tires, and it should be good. Yeah, it's going to look a lot better. The first thing I did was went ahead and pinched off the brake line. I do have a new one to put on that came with the brake kit. It's not really a kit. I'm using bare errata speed rotors. They're an inch bigger because they are Z06 brakes. And I went on eBay and got me a set of calipers and those calipers came with brake lines. So I am gonna replace that brake line because the two don't fit each other. So then what I wanna do is I'm gonna remove the 221 millimeter bolt from the caliper, pull off the rotor, throw them away. And then I'm gonna put on the new bare rotor, remove the sticker, put on my caliper, make sure I stuff the new caliper with my brand new pads, put them on, replace the brake hose, bleed the brakes, then paint the brakes. I'll show you guys how you can do a quick courtesy. If you have a nice car like a Corvette come in, you have a long time client, you're doing a brake setup on their car, it's the little things that matter that get you noticed. So I'll show you guys a nice easy way you could throw some paint on a caliper and make it look really good in mere minutes. All you see when the wheel's on the car is the face of the caliper, a little bit of this side. So we're gonna take some tape, don't use duct tape, section it off. I don't want to get the rotor and I don't want to get the brake pad, so I'm going to go down like this and not go sideways. We're going to take a piece of paper. I'm going to snake that guy right in there. Another piece. Yeah. Get this guy, snake it down right there. The front one has a lot more gap, so therefore it's easier. So I got a scuff pad here, and basically what I want to do is scratch the surface so that it's porous. That way the paint will adhere to it better. Just scuff it up a little bit. I've already cleaned it with brake cleaner. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna take our, we got Duplicolor caliper paint with ceramic, shake it up really good, and you just spray it. Anytime you guys are painting a surface, you wanna scratch it up first, then you paint it, and the paint will last and stick a little bit longer. So when you guys are wanting to bleed your brakes at home, make sure, in this case, we didn't disturb much. We just changed out the calipers and the cables. We didn't touch the brake master cylinder. So if you're by yourself at home, you can do yourself a gravity bleed by yourself. You just open up each corner, open up both bleeder valves, put hoses on them because you just painted everything up and make sure that the flow is nice and steady stream, no air bubbles, close them off. Make sure you top it off. Make sure you pump the brakes because if not, you'll hit the first thing when you're getting out the shop. I got these cool stickers also from the same person that I got these calipers from, which is very smart for them to offer it because like I said, you can make these 20 year old calipers look brand new and they give you extra ones just in case you mess up. I always like that. That looks so good. I love big brake kits on cars. I think it's the 
number one bang for the buck you can do on a vehicle. Yeah, absolutely. And I think it doesn't matter whether you're adding horsepower to a car or if you have a fast car from the factory. If you drive fast, you need to check your brakes because sometimes your factory brakes may not correlate with your style of driving. So this is, I think, one of the most important upgrades you can do to your car. It look looks awesome. The red paint, the stickers, everything worked out really nice. <laughs> it looks fantastic. And it's also really important to remember that when you do new brakes, always, you have to go easy on the brakes at first. So never like go out, get on them, slam on the brakes. You have to ease into them for how many miles? Roughly 50 to 100. You want to break it in easy. Up to 300 really, depending on what size brakes you have, what kind of compound you have on the brake pad itself. Yeah. And now we can put the wheels back on the truck. Where they belong. Yep. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NH Oil Undercoating. Sam and Doug are gearing up the Nissan 240Z for the ultimate challenge, the great race. With expert care, they're tackling a few miscellaneous maintenance tasks, including installing a new battery and replacing old fuel lines. Sit back and witness the meticulous preparation and dedication behind the scenes of automotive excellence. We're almost done with the Z. Last week we installed what we needed for the great race, which is the big analog clock, along with the new calibrated speedometer. Right. And this week we're gonna do some maintenance. Yeah, the maintenance on this will be real easy, Sam, especially for, for me, because I get to watch you do all the maintenance. And that, that for me is always the easiest part. <laughs> but luckily you bought me something I like a lot and there's a whole bunch of room around it. Yeah. Right now we're replacing the fuel lines. One of the things that you wanna make sure, the fuel lines get a little old, they get cracked. Uh, you don't want any fuel leaking on your exhaust system. It's a real easy way to catch your car on fire. Years ago when I was young, a friend of mine said, oh, it won't catch fire when you burn his car to the ground. Nissans use fuel lines to go from the hard line over to the filter, over to the rail, whether it's carbureted or fuel injected, all the way up into the Fair Lady Z that was 95 to 97, 90 to 97 in America. You look at that clamp right there, that clamp has been contaminated with fuel. You look at that one, it's the regular color it should be, but that one has been stained with fuel. So it's actually been just been seeping a little bit. So it's a very good idea to look at your fuel hoses, look at your clamps, look for discoloring. If you see it, replace them. This is, is really cool. If you take a look at it, somebody painted a picture showing the, the Z leading the pack, and I would assume that's at a racetrack. I thought that was a very nice touch on this car. And it looks like somebody was trying to make it pretty at first yep. with just the, you know, the old school method, and it's yep. like, no, that looks better. Look at that Nissan tag on this. Tech tips is when you're changing a battery, always pull off the uh, negative side and the reason being this is when you're using a wrench or when you're doing something onto it and and i can tell you because i've done it before because i got lazy and didn't do that and i hit an arc causes some problems oh boy you can really light yourself up or you can even short components out and that's why this gm wrench is designed just for this battery it's got a sleeve on it but a lot of us don't use these so therefore it's bare it can cause a problem you know, the one nice thing, Sam, when I've gone all the way through the car, the engineering they did on this thing is absolutely incredible. Everything is built really, really well. I totally agree. I'm really glad we decided to do this one. This is right up my alley. And I'm driving. And you're driving, yeah. The impact wrench I was using didn't even have to hit the hammer to remove it. Everything was pretty much loose. And that's because over time that gasket has shrunk, so the hardware has loosened up. So that's why it was leaking. That's why it's a good idea to drive your cars. Don't let them just sit. It's very important, at least once every six months. You gotta give it that. Go out and check your hardware as well. But when you're doing a good inspection, you know, you got the valve cover off, take a look at it. And this gasket was put on properly because there was no glue used. So that way it just comes right off, you throw it away, you have no surface you have to clean there. You have no surface you have to clean on the valve cover gasket itself. Place a new one in place, put the valve cover on top. There are no half moons, so there's no reason for glue. And don't forget the grade oil that we'll be using. The older cars take a heavier weight oil, 10W30, 10W40. You're not gonna put 5W30 or 5W20 in this one. I put 10W40. Don't hog down on the oil drain plug. Just make it nice and snug. Last thing you wanna do is cost yourself an oil pan.
Doug and I got the battery done. We got new fuel lines. We got new wipers. So I think we're ready for the great race. Sam, I, I think we are. And you know, for you older guys, you know, putting gloves on for me really helps. You know, as I've gotten older, my skin's a little thinner. Uh, plus, you know, when I'm dealing with the, the, the oils and the brake fluids and everything, I don't need to be absorbing that into my system. So the gloves really help. And besides that, when I take them off, my hands are clean. Yeah, it's important to have clean hands. One of the biggest problems I've seen being a mechanic in the last 28 years is rodents. They get everywhere in your vehicle, RV, boat. They find a little nook and cranny. They make a huge mess, and it costs you a lot of issues in the future. Yeah, agricultural as well. Absolutely. It is a uh, real problem when you get into like a combine or something, or anything that's sitting around for a long time, an RV, a boat, We've even one as far as had this uh, independently tested with a, a laboratory. They set up the test various different ways, and we know that the effectiveness is based on three things. It is touch, it is fear, and it is scent. We put a, a predatory synthetic scent in there, so they, they believe that there is a predator in the area. So we're, we're playing it off of all three of their fears, and, and it's become very effective. I mean, we were the, the most effective in the category with the testing. That's absolutely awesome, because let me tell you, there's nothing more of a problem than a rodent, especially like in boats. The bellows in the back, they go, chew through the billows, now they got a clear path inside the bilge, yep. make themselves a home for six months. So if you guys want to keep the rodents out of your equipment, even the AC at home, you want to check out NHOU's Mouse Out. Welcome back to more Sam's Garage, presented by NHOU. Sam's taking performance of his friend's Mustang GT to new heights with the installation of Valvetronic exhaust mufflers. With precision engineering and cutting edge technology, they're unleashing the full potential of the Coyote engine swap. Went to Skip at Exhaust Wizard in Lilburn, Georgia. Had him do me a nice midsection along with installing my new Valvetronic design mufflers. Now you know we all like exhaust cutouts, but unfortunately all the aftermarket ones out there have little hardware and their construction is really bad to where it doesn't last a long time. Valvetronic completely changes that game. Some of the new OEMs come with this design. It's got a vacuum operated flap on the inside of this constructed nice stainless steel muffler to where everything is right in the muffler. So when you guys turn it on, it's gonna go right here. You don't have anything on the outside that's gonna break on you down the road. So when they're closed up, they sound pretty close to stock. You can hear a little rumble, but pretty quiet. But when you open them up, it's game over. Now, what I've done on this particular system is in the early 90s and the 2000s, the Fox bodies looked really good when you dumped the exhaust before the rear axle right onto the ground, but it was a little too loud for the most part. So what I did here is install these new Valtronic design mufflers, giving me the best of both worlds. I got that rumble nice and quiet when I need it, but when I want to open it up, when I get to the car show, I got all the sound I need. There is a left and a right because the Valvetronics has an in and an outlet on the same side of the muffler. So you have to put the body in the muffler in an area where you got lots of clearance underneath the car. And when you guys are using a V-band flange, make sure that you actually get the two pieces in line together. There is going to be a ridge on one of them and an indention on the other as a little receiver. That way you'll have no exhaust leak, you have a nice tight band. And what you want to do is make sure that the vacuum operation valve is somewhere so you can still access it so you can get your vacuum hose to it also away from all the exhaust system so you don't burn your vacuum hose and then not work on you. The cap you just saw me take off the control box, you guys can transfer it onto your T-fitting if you're only using one muffler. That way you have an in, out, to the valve and you're good to go. So Valvetronic gives you guys a cigarette plug for the power and ground. If you guys don't want to occupy a cigarette plug or you don't have an outlet back here like most SUVs do in the last 20 years, just take it and cut it. Use that for something else in the future. Strip the outside wires. Inside you got a power and ground. Very simply hooked up to an ignition source, switched power, not a constant. You don't want this to drain your battery because it does have an antenna so it's always going to be on looking for a signal. So you want it on a switched power. Very important. As you can see there's no mounting points on this. I'm going to take my 3M accelerator. This not only cleans, but it also puts a tacky surface on both sides so that everything is reliable. The vacuum source from the control box, it's gonna come out here. I need to tee it off with my T-fitting that's provided. 
What I want to do is make sure that I'm away from the exhaust system. It doesn't have to be too pretty, but I'm going to go to the fuel lines and the brake lines, zip tie to them, getting me to the valves, and I should be okay, and this thing should not melt. Zip tying the vacuum lines to whatever you're zip tying to the car, make sure you leave some room so that the vacuum line is able to be moved because I don't want you pinching it down so much that you actually collapse the vacuum hose because then the valves won't ever see any air and it won't work. got two buttons, open and close. You're gonna hold it down to open it, hold it down to close it. Man, that sounds so good. There's nothing like dumped exhaust. Reminds me of 30 years ago, and yes, I am that old. Now, this is a very high quality system. With Valtronic Design, you can do it right from your pocket. You can be standing outside your car, hit the button, and it goes from absolutely extreme to 100% quiet. Welcome back to Sam's Garage, presented by NHOU. Join Sam and his wife, Julie, as they tackle a crucial upgrade, installing a new steering gearbox and Summit Racing steering column in the Chevy Hemi truck project. With teamwork and precision, they're ensuring smooth handling and control for this classic ride. Once completed, this project is one step closer to hitting the road. All right, so it's time to fix one final leak on the Chevy Hemi project, and that is the steering box. It's original, 30 years old. There's a steering column in there. It's aftermarket, but I don't like it. It was not installed properly. It's black. Considering the whole interior is black, I need something to contrast. So I went to Summit Racing. I got a Summit Racing steering column and all the accessories that I need for a complete install. But at the same time, I'm going to go ahead and replace that steering box. Okay, so I got the steering box out, and always remember that when you're replacing any parts on your vehicle, you always want to check the two parts and make sure they're one before you put it back in the truck or car. So in this case, this truck was told to me that it was a 99 S10. And so I look up on the part sheet, 99 S10, it looks nothing like what I got here. So I look up a 92 S10, and what saved me here was this little Z right there. See that little Z mark right there? is on the factory. Well, that tells me what manufacturer it is. So after looking through the parts store, I found the perfect one, it's exact match. I counted the splines on both the input shaft and the output shaft, and both are good. So all I gotta do now, reverse procedure installation, I wanna have Julie run the bolts in. And before I put in my steering column, I just wanna confirm this job. Don't go to another job without finishing one job. We're gonna put fluid in there, then you're gonna go in and you're gonna turn the wheel and what she's going to do by turning the wheel is prime the system. So I got the old column out and the new column here. The first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to measure the column where it bolts to the hub, down to the bottom of the shaft. That one's 23, this one's 25. So this column is two inches shorter than this one, but my shaft is longer on the car, so it's gonna make up for that two inches right there. If you can see right here, I've got a nine bolt steering wheel. I got a nine bolt Summit Racing hub. Well, after I took off the horn button, I noticed that the inside diameter is not gonna work with this outside diameter here. So I ordered a steering wheel from Summit. It'll be here next day air. So now I've got a couple shady things going on here. Inside, there was a hole that was not round, and you could see that the gentleman had covered it with a piece of thin metal. The other thing is that the mount that holds this old column in is permanently installed and would take about 45 to 50 hours to uninstall it and install this one. Luckily, this one will fit, so now I'm gonna go ahead and install this by first putting on our universal column firewall mount. So the whole reason why I replaced the steering column is because one, this thing is old and nasty and everything on the truck is new. And it's black, I want to brush the aluminum.
So finally, the last thing on the truck that was leaking that was old has been replaced, which is the steering box. And the steering column's completely been taken care of and is stationary and tight like it should be. There is some work to be done on the firewall because there's a huge gap underneath that ring. So if you guys want to do a complete steering column swap on your car, Summit Racing has every option you need in any color you want, along with all the linkages and couplers you need to get the job done on the weekend with a buddy. Now all I gotta do is the heat, the air, I gotta do the bed wood, I just want to know who's going to pay for all this stuff. It's at least 200 more hours. And people wonder why they don't go. As the engines quiet down, we bid farewell to another exhilarating episode of Sam's Garage. Today, Sam and Davi and his team showcased their dedication to automotive performance by tackling a diverse range of projects. From upgrading the rear brakes on the Holley C6 Corvette to fine-tuning the Nissan 240Z for the great race, every moment was filled with precision and passion. And let's not forget the added performance of the new Valvetronic mufflers on the Mustang GT and the enhanced control of the Chevy Hemi truck with a new steering column and gearbox.